Many patients use medical cannabis to treat their anxiety. Different cannabinoids can affect serotonin, dopamine, as well as inflammation, all which can impact anxiety. So let's talk about it. Hey everybody, it's Dr. David. I am a board certified pediatrician in Tampa, Florida. I am also the owner and medical director of Holistic Relief, a medical cannabis company. And I also do worldwide consultations for people who need help understanding how to best use medical cannabis. By all means, reach out if you need some help. Now, today we're going to be talking about anxiety. And there's lots of different treatments out there, of course, pharmaceuticals, other natural treatments, but we're going to be focusing on medical cannabis today. And we're going to be talking about different forms of medical cannabis, different cannabinoids, because they can have different effects. And of course, they can work in combination and synergy with each other as well. Now, the reason why we think it helps in the first place is going back to our concept that the endocannabinoid system, first of all, which is the the cannabinoids that we all naturally make, the endocannabinoid receptors that we all have that our endocannabinoids as well as plant-based cannabinoids stimulate, okay? Um, and the and the job of that endocannabinoid system is to maintain balance homeostasis within the body, especially when it comes to nerve cells and inflammatory immune types of cells as well. Okay, so the most common um, that I've used over all of the years is certainly CBD. Okay, and of course, the top cannabinoid besides THC that people have heard about, even when everything was illegal, the first thing that became illegal in most states was CBD before THC became. Now, CBD itself does have wonderful anti-inflammatory properties, and neuroinflammation is believed to be part of what happens when some people have anxiety. In addition to that, CBD also works on a serotonin cell called 5-HT1A, okay, um, HTP1A, excuse me. And this, um, this form of hydroxytryptophan, that's what HT, that's what becomes um, serotonin in the conversion process in the, in the metabolism of the body. But what the CB does is, is a receptor um, activator for that serotonin. So, you know, it can be sitting in a dormant state, but if you activate the receptor, then it's going to be much more receptive to accepting the stimulation because we know that serotonin is one of the things that is low and why medications often, such as serotonin reuptake inhibitors like Prozac and Zoloft and Paxil and all of those, why they work not just for depression, but for anxiety. So it works in a similar manner in terms of working on the receptors and the uh, the neurotransmitter itself, although it actually works in a rather different way on the micro micromolecular level. Now, another one that I've been having a lot of success with recently, especially for things like anxieties, OCDs, that whole world, is called CBG. And you may have heard me talk about it on this channel. Um, Certainly not new to the world. It's been around as long as the plant has been around for. But really in just the past couple of years, has it been taking on more prominence, more acceptance, more understanding of how well of a job it can do for things like anxiety or OCDs. And I have a lot of patients who are telling me that it works when other cannabinoids did not work or other cannabinoids caused a negative reaction. And it's thought that what CBG does is it may impact the serotonin reuptake, okay? So as you may know, the, so one cell releases serotonin, it tingles over here on those five, on that five um, HT1 receptors that I was talking about. And then the serotonin eventually gets sucked back up by the first cell. That's called serotonin reuptake. And pharmaceuticals that are serotonin reuptake inhibitors, SSRIs, it slows the reuptake into the cell so that more is around here longer tingling over here, stimulating the cell to go that way. And it is felt that CBG may be working in a similar way. Now, this is all very preliminary. All of this biochemical stuff needs to be worked out, but this is where it seems as if things are going. In addition to that, CBG seems to boost dopamine, which also can impact moods and behaviors, etc. Now, the third one that I also use a lot is, of course, THC with medical cannabis. I absolutely recommend people starting the other ones first if they really want to see if they're going to get a medical benefit and what's the best way of optimizing. I don't start people on THC. Now, at low doses, THC, even micro doses, very small doses, often doses that are not enough to have a person be intoxicated, low doses seem to of THC seem to increase the, the serotonin. Again, another way that um, 
the serotonin, and obviously the more serotonin that's increased, that's released into the synapse, then the more of the tingling that happens to go that way. Okay. But interestingly, high amounts of THC seem to cause the opposite. It can cause a drop in serotonin. That may be the reason why higher doses can cause panic, anxiety, paranoia, etc., which I'm going to do another video on that. So stay tuned for that. Now, there was actually even a recent study and they, you know, the um, hemp creates buds that look just like regular marijuana buds do. OK, like medical cannabis. Um, but so one can roll it, put in a joint, put it into other kind of inhaling device, etc. And what they showed in this one study, which I've linked down below um, um, from McGill University, they found that the inhaling of CBD actually had a better effect when inhaling the exact number of milligrams compared to those that were cannabis based, marijuana based for THC. So there was actually 24 parts of CBD to one part THC in the one group and then the opposite 24 parts THC to one part CBD and they showed that it worked better using the CBD okay now I realize some people use the CBD also for the intoxicating the euphoric the feel better side and that can be helpful too of course if you're happier then of course that may make a person less anxious but for the true treatment of anxiety types of symptoms CBD does seem to do better now of course the question is for any one individual it does it work I just quoted a study but does it work for you does it work for your family member your loved one your friend the only way to know is to try. Okay. Now, at least in the state of Florida, because of the other similarly debilitating conditions, anxiety is a treatable condition with medical cannabis because anxiety is a debilitating symptom that is seen in PTSD, which is one of the conditions that we voted for that's in our constitution that says can be treated. But there's that other debilitating um similar conditions clause. And so again, the only way to know, but if again, if you want to see if it is, as I said, don't first start with the THC, start with the CBD, maybe try the CB, the CBN, I mean, sorry, the CBG. But if you but of course, if you're already a THC user and you have anxiety or panic, my recommendation would be to stop the THC for a little while, then start the CBD, uh, the, C, uh, the, the CBD and work up the dose and see what you got. You may find that you, that your symptoms are better controlled that way. So I typically will first bring in the CBD. If I don't get the benefit, then I'm quick to bring in the CBG. And then if I'm still needing something, then I'll typically bring in the THC. But I also recommend keeping the other things going. Again, it's synergy. So don't stop the CBD to start the CBG or don't start the, stop the CBG to start the THC. Keep them all going. Maybe at the end, the combination is what you need. Maybe you don't need as much THC be around um, um, to bring the most benefit because of all that synergy that's in there. If you do find that the magic bullet for you, the magic combination, then you make him want to start lowering one, starting the other. Hey, maybe do I need this? Oh, but remember, if you make one change at a time, if you, um, you know, changes, I think can be made as, as quickly as three days because the benefits are seen, but that quickly, but you may have had a good or bad day. So I always like to wait three days and before making a change, but that's the really the way to do it. And of course, the most important thing is you start off at a low dose you know, a couple milligrams, most, especially in the THC, start very low, one milligram, two milligrams, and see what happens. Gradually work up. But also that's a way that you can make sure that your body tolerates it well. So hopefully that helps you out. Of course, you want to have any comments, please make some, um, make some, put some comments down there below. We always like to hear, we like to comment on things that are worthy of being commented on. But of course, we just like to hear people's opinions and experiences as well. Hope you have a great day.